Hello everyone and welcome to our tutorial here on NoiseJunkies.net. Finally, in this tutorial we'll take a look at how to create some pretty random animations with the colonial objects as well as some formula effectors, step effectors and time effectors. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this is more or less the outcome we're going to create, you know, an evolving a set of objects they just go round and round. Now I think the the final outcome in the story will actually be best. Will actually be better than this one because this one I actually created like two or three weeks ago. But the point really is, uh, well, why am I making this tutorial? First of all, somebody asked if you could use more than one uh, primitive in the clone object, and well, as you can see, yes, you can. Also, it kind of reminds me of Christmas. This whole decoration here, and you know, it's it's really cool to just show all the MoGraph features and all the effects that you can use in a single colonial object. So uh, before we get started though, some personal notes. My voice is not so great right now. I'm kinda kinda have a cold right now, but I hope that's not a big issue. I hope you can still understand me. So the first thing I want to do now is to create a floor and later on we're actually going to create the lights. But the first thing is the floor and it's supposed to be you know just an infinite floor. And now we're going to go to MoGraph and create our clone object where we're going to be placing all our primitives. So I want to place a cube inside. I want to bring the whole thing a little, you know, up, up to floor level, more or less in here. And then change the clone object mode to grid array. We've done that before. And then just spread this out a little bit. Now again, we're going to zoom out a little bit and push this corner object up so that we don't interfere with the floor. Very cool. Well, now that we have that, though, we could still add some other primitives, like so, you see? And it automatically adds the proportion, so it's all one-third, one-third, one-third. Now, this is kind of boring because, it's, you know, one column, one column, one column, each, you know, one of each kind, but we're gonna change that a lot with all our incredible modifiers. The first modifier I want to apply in here is called the time effector. So I'm gonna click on the clone object, go to effectors, and you can see the time out the time effect is checked. So it means we are definitely applying. Now what the time effector does, it, the reason I love this one is because you don't have to animate anything really. It just automatically calculates the time you have and the kind of animation you want to have. So in this case, you have rotation checked automatically and 90 degrees for X position. So in the 90 frames that you have, it's going to rotate 90 degrees. If you were to apply 180 frames, you wouldn't have to animate anything because it would just rotate you know, slower until it completes the 90 degrees revolution. Very cool. So time factor is awesome. And we're going to also be checking the position, the scale. I mean, it's totally up to you how much entropy you want in your animation, but I'm going to be animating pretty much in all sorts of categories. At first, sort of uniformly. So, as you can see, they just do a lot of mass in here. Uh, I definitely think the scale is a little too much, so I'm going to select this and set it to 0.25 and then set this to 0.5, 0 0.75, and then 0.2. That way, just a little, you know, less serious. Another one that we can add, though, that I find pretty cool is the formula factor. And as you can see, it, it's not checked in here, so you have to get to the formula factor, oops, and drag it. So now we have both of them. And what the formula factor does, as it did automatically, it just really oscillates the scale, position, and rotation that we did with the time object. But they are not mutually exclusive, so you can have both of them at the same time. They are, however, interfering with our floor, so you have two options. You can either drag the floor down or just make sure that your uh, clone object is again upwards I'm just gonna, or you can just back off a little bit so for the formula factor again you have the position which you can change a lot like so and that way you're gonna have a lot of craziness going on 
I don't really recommend that much. I think 40 maximum will be good. But you can also oscillate in the other ones. 40, 40. The scale can also change naturally. I think already changed the scale a little bit. So I would actually make a negative one to kind of counterbalance. And then it can also rotate a little bit. So now I have a totally different outcome. But it's still growing with the time effector even though it has some sort of uh, counterbalance. Another cool effect that we can apply in here is, of course, the random effector. Now, I think we already have a random enough animation, but if you want to add extra randomness, you can just apply the random effect in here. And then again, scale, rotation, position, and change them up. And that way, everything's going to change. So now I'm going to have something that's really completely different from the initial outcome that I showed you guys. We can apply now some interesting lighting effects. Uh, I think it's cool to add one like in the middle and then one there and then maybe one there in the background so that I have something like this. Now the floor is just way too reflective really. Um, you can definitely go to the lights and maybe add the intensity to 50 instead of 100. That way you're not going to have such a bright scene. Yeah, that's much better. And then we're going to have two materials. One for the floor, which I want just to add 50% uh, reflection. And I want to make it slightly orange, like so. Actually, I'm going to change color pattern. Slightly red, like so, or pinkish. And then you can apply it to your floor. And now we have the material for the corner object, which will include all the primitives. And I want it to be, geez, I don't know, also kind of pink, I suppose. But then for the surface, you can have tile surface. And if you apply that to the corner object, Oh, by the way, don't forget a reflection too. Let's say 20% reflective. And if you render, you can already have something. Now, for, for the lighting, actually, one of the things you can change uh, is for the color. You still have the tiles, but I actually change it a little, like slightly orange in here. And for the reflection, kind of for the floor I mean you can definitely have also a color of you know more orangish that kind of changes the whole you know lighting purpose of the scene very good and then you can add a camera and add animation I've covered many tutorials doing that so one other thing I want to talk about though is about this other outcome which you can achieve just with the formula factor and the time factor and it's kind of completely different but it's just a bunch of squares that just randomly appear in the screen and they're kind of loopable and when you render them it's again a totally different outcome from the one I just showed you guys uh, I'm not gonna do it from scratch but I can tell you guys that what I did is I created a sphere that's just massive I'm gonna back up a little bit massive and the material for that sphere is simply uh, a transparent material, 70% brightness, and slightly green as the color. So just add that sphere and also uh, add a sky. And that sky has a dark green color. So if I render now, you're going to see that the sky has a dark green color. And then the sphere has a lighter transparent color. And then in the, in the, in, in the center of that sphere, inside it, you're going to have the the actual MoGraph animation and then make sure you're inside and then again ugh, hate the magic mouse actually I love it but sometimes I hate it and then you have the two lights in here in the extreme opposites and for the clone object itself just have a cube and then a formula factor and a time factor and uh, as you can see I did add some sort of animation on the time factor so it's not a constant thing, changes a little bit upwards. 
uh, actually it oscillates on the middle it reaches the peak which is 0 0.5 for the scale and then everything zero again 180 and since the first frame kind of has the same inclination you have you have a loop there